Alright, this is data types 1.4.1 in the spec. I'm going to speed run this, so let's just get straight into it. The first part just wants us to know about primitive data types, and primitive data types are basically just the most basic data types. They're the foundational building blocks that all of our data is made up of. The first one to know about are integers, which are basically just whole numbers. For example, 1, 34, negative 3, so negative numbers are included as well, and that large number. Next are floats, which are basically just any real numbers. So that includes decimals, fractions, and even pi. The next to know about are characters, which are basically just any single character. <laughs> like, for example, lowercase a, capital H, a dot, or even special characters like an asterisk. Then we have strings, which are basically just any group of characters. For example, hello. And you might think 5231 is an integer, but it's actually a string because we've got quotation marks around it. And then whatever that uh, thing is. <laughs> Lastly, we have booleans, which just store two possible values. And those two values are true and false. Moving on to representing all the positive integers in binary. Um, we use a base 10 system, also called deanery which means that every digit represents a power of 10, right? So our units value represents 10 to the power of 0. Our tens unit represents uh, 10 to the power of 1. Our hundreds unit represents 10 to the power of 2, and so on. Binary is base 2, so each unit or each column represents 2 to the power of something, or powers of 2. So in this case, we have 8 columns, and each column uh, takes up 1 bit. So in this case, this is 8 bits, and we're moving up with powers of 2. It's also important to mention that each digit can either be a 1 or a 0. And a 1 means that we add that number, and a 0 just means we don't add that number. So if we wanted to represent 52 in binary, we'd uh, start from left to right. So we'd ask ourselves, does 128 fit into 52? The answer is no, so we add a 0. We move on, then we move on to the next number. We ask, us, we ask ourselves, does 64 fit into 52? The answer is no, so we add a 0. Then we ask, does 32 fit into 52? The answer is yes, so we add a 1. Then we have to do 52 minus 32, and that gives us 20. Then we ask ourselves, does 16 fit into 20? The answer is yes, so we add a 1. And we do this until we either end up with 0, or we fill up the entire table. So let's continue. Um, we just checked that 16 fits into 20, so we have to do 20 minus 16, and then we go, and then we end off with 4. And 4 is one of the powers of 2, so we can just fill out the entire table from here. Moving on to sign and magnitude. So we were able to show how we can represent all the positive integers in binary, but how would we represent a negative number in binary? Well, the sign and magnitude method just uses the most significant bit, which in this case is 8, because we're using 4 bits here, to represent the negative sign. So if there was a 1 here, then the number would be negative. If there was a 0, then the number would not be negative. So if we want to represent negative 6 in binary, we would have a 1 here, because that's the most significant bit, and that represents the negative sign. And then we just represent 6 normally in binary. So 6 is going to be a 4 and a 1, which is going to be 1, 1, and 0. So negative 6 in binary using the sine and magnitude method is just going to be 1, 1, 1, 0. Now 2's complement is slightly different, but it's just another way to represent negative numbers in binary. And I'm going to show you an algorithm to perform 2's complement. But I'm not going to explain how it works, because I don't know how it works. But I'll leave a um, link in the description to an explanation of why this algorithm works. So let's say we have a binary number. Let's say, for example, 6, which is going to be 0, 1, 1, 0. And we want to turn that into a negative number. So to do that, we just invert every digit in the binary number. So zeros becomes 1, and 1s become zeros. So for this binary number, it would be 1, 0, 0, 1. And then we add 1 
to the least significant bit. So the last one here. And then that's going to be 0. We carry the 1. 1, 0, 1. And this is our negative number represented in binary. The only difference here is that usually this last digit, in this case, would represent 8. But because we did 2's complement on it, it now represents negative 8. So this binary number is going to be negative 8 plus 0 4's and 1 2's. So negative 8 plus 2, which is going to be negative 6. And that's how you turn 6 into a negative number using 2's complement. Now on to addition and subtraction of binary numbers. I showed this a bit when I was doing 2's um, complement, but in this case I'll go more in depth. So adding two binary numbers is the same as adding in deanery, but in this case we're in base 2. So if we start from the right hand side, 1 plus 0 equals 1, 1 plus 1 equals 2, but in binary we can only have 1's and zeros, right? So these two 1's, which represent 2, add up to make 1, 4. So we carry a 1 over to there. And this will just be 0. Then we have three 1's here. So this will just be 1, and then we carry a 1. Then 1 plus 0 plus 0 equals 1. 0 plus 1 equals 1. Then 1 plus 1 means we carry a 1. This will be 0. And then we have to carry another 1. And that'll be just be 1 there. Now onto subtraction of binary numbers. 1 minus 0 equals 1. 1 minus 1 equals 0. 1 minus 1 equals 0. 0 minus 0, just be 0. 0 minus 1, well, we can't do that, so we need to carry a 1 from the, from the bit above it. That'll be 0. And then 32 is equal to 2 lots of 16, so that'll be a 2 here. 2 minus 1 is equal to 1. And then we need to carry another 1, because we can't do 0 minus 1. So we carry a 2 here. Then we do 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1, and we've done all of it now. Now onto hexadecimal, which is base 16. And hexadecimal is the same as deanery, in that we represent 0 through 9 with the normal 0 through 9 numbers. But in hexadecimal, we, rep we represent 10 through 15 with 6 layers, A through F. And just like how binary was in powers of 2, Hexadecimal is in powers of 16. So if we wanted to represent 43 in hexadecimal, um, obviously we know 60 cubed and 16 squared are too big for 43. So we need to ask ourselves, how many 16s fit into 43? And the answer is 2, because 32 fits into 43, but 48 does not. So then we need to do 43 subtract 32. And that gives us 11. And we need to find the hexadecimal uh, unit, which represents 11. And that's going to be B. So B goes into the, six, the first column. And we've converted 43 to hexadecimal, which is just going to be 2B. If we want to convert 3F to deanery, well, the 3 here represents the 16 column, right? So we need to do 3 lots of 16, which is just going to be 48. And then we need to add on um, f amounts of 16 to the power of 0. And f represents 15, so we just need to add on 15. And that's going to be 63. Lastly, we need to know how to convert between binary, hex, and deanery. So my advice is that if they ever ask you to convert from a binary number to a hexadecimal number or from hex to binary, I'd recommend just converting from binary to deanery and then from deanery to hex. So let's first convert this binary number into deanery. So let's rewrite the binary number and then let's write our powers of 2. So we have 0 of 128, we have 1 of 64, 
we have a 32, we have an 8, we have a 4, a 2, and a 1. And I think that equals 111. So now we need to convert this number into hexadecimal. So we know that 16 squared is obviously too big for 111. So let's ask ourselves how many 16s fit into 111. So we have 16, 32, 48, 64, 80, 96, and 112. So 6 16s fit into 111. And I think the remainder is going to be 15, right? So we need to find the number or the hex unit corresponding to 15. And that's just going to be F. So the answer or the binary number, this, converted to hexadecimal, is going to be 6F.